A Mail Order Bride to Heal His Heart. Written by Etta Foster and published by Starfall Publications. Book from Historical Western Romance Series. Save more with our ebook and audiobook bundles on our website, starfallpublicationsbooks.com. Subscribe for more audiobooks. Enjoy. Chapter 1 The train whistle blew long and loud overhead, drowning out the sound of Alexandra Clark's first steps onto the platform. Clear of the compartment door, she paused to stretch her tired body and breathe in the fresh outside air. The crowd had jostled around her for the first few steps, but now her fellow passengers all went their separate ways. How surreal to be on her own again after three and a half days in constant company. Yet Alexandra couldn't keep the smile off her face. Her nervous heart thrummed with excitement in her chest. She had been awaiting this moment ever since the first letter from Caleb Turner arrived in her post, all the way back in Virginia. For weeks, he was a sort of phantom in her mind, and he was about to be made real. Alexandra stood on the tips of her toes, holding her skirts, surveying the shifting sea of faces for one that might belong to him. A brief surge of anxiety dimmed her joyous expectation. The worst possible scenarios flashed through her mind, abandoned, forgotten, lingering in vain on the empty platform without the man who was to be her husband. She clenched her hands tightly to keep them from shaking, determined to put all her misgivings in the past. And then she saw him, or at least a man who could be him, he stood quietly off to the side at the very end of the platform where a set of wooden stairs descended to the flat, dusty Montana scrub. His hands were deep in his pockets, downcast eyes shaded by the wide brim of a soft brown hat. Alexandra's smile returned in earnest, silencing her fears. She grabbed hold of her two trunks and began to trundle them in his direction, never taking her gaze off his figure in case he disappeared. The man cleared his throat, shifted his weight, pushed his hands even further into the depths of those pockets, all without looking up. Ten feet away, she decided to throw caution to the wind. Caleb, she called, Caleb Turner. Finally, he glanced her way, and she got her first glimpse of the prettiest eyes she ever seen, their amber center ring by brilliant sapphire blue. He straightened up to his full height and strode toward her, spurs jangling at his heels. That's me, he said. Caleb Turner, I guess that makes you Miss Alexandra Clark. His voice was soft and low. It gave her a little bit of the shivers in a nice way. Yes, Alexandra replied trying her best to tone down the rush of exhilaration coursing through her veins. This was it. The adventure she longed for was set to begin at last. It's so lovely to meet you. The pleasure is mine. Caleb gave her half of a shy grin as he took her luggage. I'd like to thank you for coming all this way. Let me help you with those. Thank you. She gave them over and let him lead her down the steps, away from the platform to a copse of trees. His wagon was parked in the slim shade beneath their branches, and after he helped her into the seat, he placed her trunks carefully into the back, one by one. Struggling to resist the urge to look at him, Alexandra let her restless eyes wander across the sun-soaked panorama surrounding the train station. The great blue bowl of the Montana sky beamed down on her, endless as far as she could see. It was marred only by the column of black smoke drifting up from the locomotive as it pulled away from the platform. Caleb pulled himself up behind the reins. He glanced sidelong at her, 
that same half smile playing on his lips. Last chance, he said, his tone gently teasing. Alexandra tucked a stray lock of hair demurely behind her ear. It's already too late for that, she answered. He chuckled and spurred the horses forward. Behind them, the steam engine that had carried her across the plains chugged off into the distance. The first part of the ride was quiet, punctuated only by the soft creaking of the wagon wheels and the rhythmic beat of horse hoofs. Alexandra sat straight with her hands in her lap. Occasionally, she glanced at Caleb's silhouette in front of her and tried to think of something to say, but it was he who broke the silence. You had a good trip out, I hope. The words left his mouth in a gentle drawl, and he turned his face just enough to look at her out of the corner of his eye. The railroad sure is something. Yes, it is, Alexandra agreed. It's hard to believe I was in Virginia two days ago. She stopped herself short from mentioning her father's house, the old ramshackle place in need of constant repairs. Nor did she mention the disdain with which her decision to flee had been met, or how he'd laughed and demanded to know who would have her. Caleb nodded. Never been there myself. I've been told it's pretty as a picture. He paused. Must be, if that's where you're from. Alexandra blushed. The rush of blood to her cheeks washed away the dregs of her negative thoughts, and she felt herself holding back a little smile, sitting in the wagon, watching him as he drove. All her worries seemed so silly. There was no way on earth that the future before her could be any worse than the one she left behind. You're very sweet, she told him shyly, if I may say so. Caleb shrugged. Well, he took a few moments to choose his words. You came out here to see about being my wife. I think niceness is the least I can do in return. He had such a soothing manner of speech. Alexandra thought she could listen to him talk all day if only he was more inclined to do so. As it stood, Caleb Turner used his words in tight economy preferring the lull of companionable silence. Alexandra, bright and gregarious, a naturally social person, had to fight the urge to fill that space with words of her own. It was a new life with new rules, and she was ready to embrace a whole new way of being. Still, despite her determination, the lack of conversation was tough to stand. She wrote it out for as long as she was able, until finally her most pressing question bubbled to the surface. How far do we have to go? Caleb made a perfunctory gesture up the road, which was more of a rutted dirt track than anything. We'll hit Maybell in half a mile. The ranch is two miles out from there. He tilted his hat down against the encroaching sun. You must be tired from traveling. Oh, I'm all right. A flare of mild embarrassment tightened her chest. She looked down into her lap. I was just curious is all. She grimaced. Maybe it was better not to talk. At least, unless she was certain she could manage not to make a fool of herself. Again, he was quiet for some time. Then he said suddenly, I hope you'll like it here. He gave a slight wry laugh. I'd hate to have lured you out here just to land you in misery. Alexandra lifted her eyes, scrutinizing the man's profile. He had his gaze fixed forward on the road now, but she saw something different, a hint of troubled waters in his expression. She hesitated, unsure of how to respond. I think it will be just fine, was what she settled on. As an afterthought, she added, I ought to be thanking you for being there to retrieve me. It was awfully kind of you. He had said in his letters that he was a rancher, and just now he mentioned a ranch. She'd been envisioning him a busy man. He quirked an eyebrow at her. I pride myself on decency, was all he said. Tentatively, Alexandra decided that she liked him. 
even though she hardly yet knew him. There were still so many unknowns, things she'd need to confront in the approaching days. But in that first hour or so, bumping along the way into Maybell, Montana, her heart was something other than heavy. There she is, Caleb drawled, as the wagon passed the bounds of a dusty but rather bustling settlement. Beautiful Maybell. His voice was tinged with equal parts irony and affection. You'll get to know her real well. Alexandra sat up straighter to get a better look around. The way the building sort of scattered across the plain was cluttered, but charming. She had almost expected to see a ghost town or a camp filled with nothing but hard scrabble cowboys, three men to every woman. Maybell, however, was a real little town, and it seemed to be on the verge of booming. Some of the townsfolk stopped to watch Caleb's wagon go by. Hats were tipped. Colorful kerchiefs waved in the warm wind. She wondered idly if they all knew him or if they were just friendly by nature. Caleb didn't stop the wagon, though he acknowledged the salutations. Alexandra noticed that he appeared intent on passing through as quickly as possible. He flicked the reins across the horses' backs, urging them on. She swiveled in her seat and watched downtown Maybell recede into the distance. Folks in Maybell are nice, Caleb told her, once they were clear of the town center. Most of them. He elected not to elaborate, and she chose not to push the subject. The landscape rolling by returned to flat fields, green with the bounty of spring. Mountains rose like blue phantoms in the far, far background. But the ethereal beauty of the Montana countryside couldn't eliminate the subtle foreboding of Caleb's last few words. He spoke little else for the rest of the two miles beyond Maybell. Alexandra tried her best to soak in the scenery and put everything else out of her mind. She was already well beyond the point of no return, and even if she wasn't, she knew there was no going back. From here on out, she'd have plenty of time to learn how to handle whatever came flying her way. And Alexandra Clark was fiercely bound to succeed no matter what. Chapter 2 The day had started early for him, as they all did on the ranch, but this one was special. Caleb's stomach twisted itself into knots as he walked out into the pre-dawn darkness. Swaths of stars faded against the gradually lightening sky. On this day in particular, Caleb was thankful for early chores. They gave him something with which to occupy his mind. Busy work to quiet the doubts that lurked in the furthest corners. Up in the desk at his bedside, he had a stash of letters from a woman named Alexandra Clark. She had answered his ad, and she was arriving in a few hours' time. He didn't really know what to do. If he was being completely honest with himself, he'd considered the advertisement a long shot, and he still wasn't all that confident in any arrangement that might result. Alexandra's hadn't been the only response, but it had been the only one to really capture his interest. She was well-spoken. She seemed sweet as pie. Her handwriting swept and curled elegantly across the pages of her letters. He liked to think she matched her penmanship in some way, although the notion of it made him wonder what she saw in a rancher like him. In his mind's eye, she was lovely and elegant, too much so to be running off to the rough-and-tumble country, he'd considered the possibility that she wasn't real after all, but then what would she have to gain besides the fare for her trip? And the letters kept coming for a week, two weeks. In the end, Caleb decided to send for her. He'd convinced himself to feel all right about it right up until the letter was safely in the postmaster's hands. After that, he felt mostly a little bit sick. The enormity of the risk he was taking wasn't lost on him. 
Caleb Turner knew better than many men all the ways a relationship could sour. Even when he had known the girl for nearly half his life, even when he was all set to marry her, but all that rose-tinted sweetness had gone to the dogs, and here he was, three years later, about to retrieve a would-be new bride the hours before his scheduled departure for the train station outside of Maybell crawled by. Caleb kept an eye on his watch, its heavy ticking like a heartbeat in his palm. He milked the cows, swept the barn, and finally he harnessed up the horses to the wagon. At 8.30, he stepped up into the driver's bench behind the team and headed out to the long lane down to the main road. A few of the ranch hands saw him go by, tipped their hats. They stopped short of wishing him luck. They knew it was a touchy subject. Caleb drove slowly once he reached the empty road. The sky was full of light now, reflecting blue off feathery white clouds. Dewdrops clung to the grass. He was going to be a full 90 minutes early for the train's late morning arrival, and yet Caleb insisted on buying time. Two miles to Maybell. As soon as the outlines of buildings appeared at the edge of his vision, he picked up speed. Town was the one place he didn't care to be caught, especially not right then. He kept his eyes wide open for any signs of trouble, but his wagon rolled through undeterred. That was a good sign maybe a good omen. He made himself whistle through the last stretch of road leading up to the station. His was the only wagon in sight, and despite the fact that no one was around to see him there by himself, Caleb felt slightly self-conscious. He eased it on over to a sparse little thicket, brought the horses to a halt. Then he settled in to wait. Affecting an air of nonchalance, Caleb pulled the brim of his hat down over his eyes. He leaned far back in the driver's seat, folding his arms across his chest, propping up his boots. The horses arched their graceful necks down to graze the short-cropped ground cover. To any observing party, the man in the wagon looked for all the world like a cowboy having an early snooze in the shade. On the inside, Caleb Turner was wide awake. He couldn't have slept if he wanted to. A thousand thoughts rushed through his brain. He had to force himself not to check his watch. The first train that came into the station wasn't hers. It was too early. Still, Caleb's heart jumped when he saw the outline of the smokestack emerging against the sky, trailing a thick stream of smoke. All the noise was enough to drown everything out, including the constant anxious voice in his head. He was almost sad to see it go. The serenity that followed left him too much to his own devices. Abandoning the facade of casual rest, Caleb climbed down and pretended to tend to the horses instead, adjusting the harness, fiddling with reins and bridles. They looked at him unimpressed, and vaguely annoyed by his attention. After a while, he gave up on that, too, and just paced tracks in the grass. Sunbeams warmed the crown of his head beneath his hat. He heard birds singing nearby. Other wagons began to rumble past him, lining up neatly in the vast space surrounding the station. Not many, but more than a few. It looked like Alexandra would be in decent company. Part of Caleb was thankful to be a little less conspicuous. Glancing around, he wondered if any of these other men were in the same position as he was. Then, the next train was coming up the tracks, a lumbering iron behemoth belching smoke. Caleb's whole body tensed for a moment. He took a deep breath. His feet moved on their own, carrying him up onto the end of the platform. The crowd that poured from the train was made of all types. Men, women, children. Many of them had exhaustion writ large on their faces, even as they smiled at the sight of friends and loved ones. 
Caleb tucked his head down, slid his hands into his pockets. The realization hit him that he had no idea what she looked like. The exodus from the belly of the train felt like it went on forever. Caleb scarcely dared to glance up from under the brim of his hat. Each time, he was met with yet more unfamiliar faces. The platform became briefly crowded, and he had to shift deep into the corner. He hoped she would somehow catch sight of him. By the time the passengers began to thin out a few minutes later, he was still standing alone. Traces of paranoia started to set in. He swept his eyes around the area, training them on each of the open train doors. Small clusters remained on the platform, cautious and slow-moving. Caleb? Caleb Turner? He snapped to attention. A woman was calling his name. When he identified her at last, the very first thing he noticed was her remarkable beauty. It seemed absurd that he had taken so long to pick out a face like hers. She was walking toward him, pulling a pair of trunks behind her. He straightened up and dusted himself off. The much-anticipated moment had arrived. It was now or never. Caleb smiled as he closed the distance between them. That's me, Caleb Turner. I guess that makes you Miss Alexandra Clark. Alexandra's trunks were small and light, startlingly so. He wanted to ask her how she'd managed to pack her whole life into them, but something told him that might be a mistake. Who knew what had driven such a pretty woman to answer an advertisement for marriage? She hardly seemed like the type who'd need to resort to those tactics to find a husband. The whole thing struck Caleb as rather suspiciously lucky. He had half a mind to ask her if she was putting him on, if she maybe had a secret love already in Montana, for whom she was planning to leave him. Instead, he loaded her into the wagon and made as much small talk as he could muster on the way toward the ranch. I hope you'll like it here, he ended up telling her. I'd hate to have lured you out here just to land you in misery. Alexandra replied with utmost politeness that she thought it would be just fine. Caleb decided right then, in that moment, that there was a good chance he did not deserve her. He knew he was not the most engaging host, that the lulls in their talking had been protracted and deep. She had already demonstrated a willingness to compromise that he'd never seen before. It filled him with tentative hope and the compulsion to try and make things work. For her sake, if nothing else, it was, as he had told her a few minutes earlier, the very least he could do. Like before, he sort of sped through Maybell, keeping vigil for troublemakers. In a perfect world, Alexandra wouldn't have noticed the change in pace, but of course she did. And of course, she continued to be an angel by not asking about it. His attempt to put her mind at ease did not go so well. He sensed it. They both shut right up after that. But once he was back in the home stretch, driving leisurely through the countryside, Caleb relaxed. Picking her up hadn't been so hard after all and she was a thousand times lovelier than he had dared to hope. She kept cutting glances over his way and tucking a loose strand of her thick, dark hair behind her ear. It soothed him a bit to know that she was nervous, too. The signpost for the ranch came up on the left. He slowed the horses into the turn. Here we are, he said out loud. Home sweet home. Alexandra leaned forward, placing her hands on the back of the driver's bench. He caught a glimpse of her bright, enthusiastic smile out of the corner of his eye, and it kind of made him smile, too. Her energy was warm and infectious. What an incredible land this is, she remarked. No wonder so many are moving out this way. She craned her neck back to take a look at the wide expanse of sky arcing high above. It doesn't quite look like this in Virginia, Caleb agreed. 
I've found there aren't a whole lot of places like this one. He glanced at her as the path wound around one last gentle bend. Alexandra gasped delightedly. Caleb had always loved the way the ranch house stood out dramatically against the low horizon, like a modern castle rising into the sky. He was gratified to see its effect worked even better on her. She stared in awe, her eyes huge green pools of wonder. Caleb said, Welcome to the ranch, Miss Clark. Chapter 3 Alexandra couldn't quite believe what she was seeing. The ranch, as Caleb so nonchalantly called it, rambled on apparently forever, across acres and acres of well-groomed emerald pastures. A huge red barn sat in its own courtyard to the left of the house, its doors standing open to the hay-scented air, but her gaze kept drawing back to the house itself, tidy and pristinely white, clad in a wonderful wraparound porch. What do you think? Caleb asked. The question brought her back from her reverie, and she felt a rush of giddiness upon realizing that she wasn't dreaming, that this was her life now. Alexandra laughed aloud. She shook her head in amazement. It's gorgeous, she told him. I've never seen anything like it. She paused. Is it all yours? The query was all innocence. Only after it had slipped past her lips did she consider that he might be offended. She simply couldn't wrap her mind around the value of a property like this one. The notion that her future husband might be wealthy had cropped up in daydreams, but nowhere else. Caleb didn't furnish her with an answer right away. His hazel eyes wandered away from her, growing distant. Afraid that she'd upset him, Alexandra hastened to correct herself. I must apologize if my remark came across as rude or too eager, she said. It was certainly not my intention. He waved her off, although he still looked far away. The wagon had slowed practically to a standstill. Caleb replied in an odd flat tone his eyes moving across the fields. It's a reasonable question. He pulled the wagon up alongside a gate in the fencing and leaned over the side, inspecting the rails. Yes, he added, it all belongs to me. The wagon finally came to a true stop in front of the steps leading up to the porch. Caleb jumped down and came around to offer her a hand. Careful now, he said with a smile. The shadows that had played across his handsome features just moments ago were gone. Alexandra took his hand and allowed him to guide her down. He fetched her trunks from the back of the wagon, carried them up onto the porch. Thank you, she told him. Caleb looked down at her. You don't have to thank me from now on, Miss Clark. She put her hands on her hips. Well... Then you don't have to call me Miss Clark, do you? Alexandra will do nicely. Tell you what, Alexandra, Caleb drawled. You go on inside and make yourself at home. I'll take care of the wagon. She grasped the handle of a trunk in each hand. I'm sure I can manage that. But she sneaked a look behind her as they each turned to go their separate ways and watched him stroll down the porch steps back to the wagon. He cut a fine silhouette, that man, lean and strong, his shoulders broad. Alexandra blushed. She scooted through the ranch house door before he had a chance to catch her glancing. The man was going to be her husband for Pete's sake. There was absolutely no need to be mooning over him like some hapless schoolgirl. Besides, there was still a chance he could turn out to be an utter oaf. She had known her fair share of handsome, charming, completely boorish men back in Virginia. But even as she thought it, Alexandra knew Caleb wasn't of that breed. There was too much quiet softness in his eyes. Excuse me, miss. May I help you? Oh. 
Alexandra looked up, surprised, directly into the smiling face of a woman in an impeccable work dress. Her hair pulled back into a sensible bun. Yes, I... Caleb sent me in. She said this somewhat apologetically and added, I've never been here before. No doubt, dear, the woman replied merrily. Her eyes sparkled like sapphires. She stepped forward, holding out hands that were simultaneously slender and strong. I'll just take those, if you please. These? Alexandra looked down at her trunks. I can... The woman made a clucking sound. Warmth radiated from her matronly face. Don't be silly, sweet pea. You must be Alexandra, and in that case, you are nothing less than our guest of honor. Her middle-aged, plumpish figure belied a surprising strength. She snatched up the trunks as she talked, ferrying them off as easily as if they were made of paper. Come along, she called. I'm sure you're hungry. Alexandra was left standing in the front hall of the ranch house, empty-handed and more than a little bewildered. Her father had always done well enough for himself, but she'd never been attended by anyone, let alone named a guest of honor. After a moment, she trailed the cheerful woman through the front parlor, past a staircase where her suitcases sat at the foot. Should I? she began. Don't even think about it, came the reply. We'll get you all settled in after you've eaten. Alexandra was hungry. She hadn't had anything to eat since a brief stop somewhere in the Midwest, hours and hours ago. The sheer excitement of embarking on her new adventure had kept her glued to her seat. That and the fear of having to stand as the train continued to fill. Thank you for watching. Before we continue into the story, do us a favor. Like this video and hit the subscribe button because it helps very much with YouTube's algorithm. Thank you again. Now back to our story. On cue, her stomach growled. My goodness, the hostess touched a hand to her heart. Oh, it pains me to think of a pretty thing like you near to starving. She pulled out a chair at the kitchen table, gesturing to it as she whirled away. Sit, sit, coffee or tea? Obediently, Alexandra planted herself in the chair. Her eyes tracked the woman's flighty path around the spacious kitchen. Tea, please, she said, blinking. Pardon me for having to ask, but what is your name and what shall I call you? A chatty housekeeper was the last person she'd expected to encounter in Caleb's house. Forgive my manners, dear, and call me Priscilla. Priscilla let out a high, tinkling little laugh. I suppose it is strange to think there will finally be a mistress of the house after all these years. But I, for one, couldn't be more thrilled. She set bowls of sugar and cream down in front of Alexandra, who stared at them, bemused. It didn't feel entirely proper to be discussing her status in the household outside of Caleb's presence. She cleared her throat. This is a lovely home. Priscilla's sigh was dreamy, perhaps wistful. It is, she said, lovely and lonely too. Poor Caleb has been here by his lonesome for nigh on three years now, ever since. She caught herself suddenly. Well, never mind that. It's not my place to say. Privately, Alexandra was dying to know, but she nodded. Priscilla bustled around the room, putting together the pieces of a hearty meal. The mug of tea came last, curling fragrant steam up into Alexandra's face. She inhaled deeply, the tension in her body uncoiled. This is amazing, she said. Your hospitality is much appreciated. Priscilla looked like she was about to faint. You poor thing, she gushed. You are just so precious. Oh, I'm so happy for you. She clapped her hands. Eat up. I'll get your things all situated in the meantime. The sound of her old trunks bumping up the stairs turned into muffled footsteps above her head 
as Alexandra dutifully ate from the spread Priscilla had laid out. It was all fresh and delicious, and it exacerbated the hidden fatigue that was lurking behind a mask of excitement. By the time she was full, her eyelids had grown heavy. She stood up and stretched, stifling a yawn. Priscilla, who had returned to the first floor, reappeared immediately, as though summoned by Alexandra's fatigue. Again, she clasped a hand over her heart. Get some rest, sweet child, for goodness sake. I'll have to see you up to your rooms so you don't fall back down the stairs. Preempting any protest Alexandra might think to make, the housekeeper ushered her along to the end of a wide, airy hall on the second story. A large picture window set straight into the wall looked down on one of the open green pastures, its smooth blanket of new grass speckled with the tiny buds of flowers. Alexandra floated out a hand to touch the glass. It looked like a scene from a fairy tale, a bedtime story woven specifically to encourage the sweetest of dreams. To her right, a lock clicked open. Priscilla took Alexandra's other hand, pressed a small key into her palm. Keep that close, she instructed firmly. It's the only one. Then she pointed down the corridor toward another door. Caleb is down there. If you ever find yourself looking for him, Alexandra could have sworn the housekeeper winked. She held in the laugh that threatened to spill out. Thank you, Priscilla, she said. I'm very pleased to make your acquaintance. The lady beamed so bright, she could have grown a garden all on her own. She tweaked Alexandra's cheek gently. Caleb Turner is a lucky man, she said, and with that, she hurried off to resume whatever she'd been doing downstairs, pausing only to call over her shoulder, do let me know if you need anything at all. Alexandra smiled. She slipped the key into her pocket and pushed the door open. The rooms behind it were bright and airy, lit by streams of country sunlight. The wide, soft bed had a canopy draped with curtains that matched the ones on the windows. A decorative pillow sat against the headboard, hand embroidered with the letter A. Alexandra raised her eyebrows. Clearly, her arrival had been much anticipated. She took a few minutes to explore the rooms, running her fingers over every surface, half waiting to wake from the dream she'd walked into. When she was satisfied that it was all real through and through, she set about the task of unpacking her things. The few items of clothing she'd brought stood at odds with the meticulous decor, the polished woodwork. A soft sigh escaped her. She walked to the silver frame mirror in the corner, took off her hat, and studied her reflection. The girl staring back at her looked more like another servant than anyone's wife to be. Alexandra frowned. She shook her head, set down the hat, and returned to her open suitcases. If Caleb's apparent wealth intimidated her, it was nothing she couldn't get used to. She had just been delivered into the kind of life most girls like her would only ever dream of. She had better make the most of it. A light, courteous knock interrupted Alexandra's organizing. She opened the door to reveal Caleb standing in the hall. He was hatless, on account of being indoors, his rich chocolate hair slightly unruly. Hello, Caleb. Alexandra smiled automatically. He rubbed the back of his neck. It occurs to me that I ought to have warned you about Priscilla, he said. She can be overwhelming, but she does mean well. I found her very charming. Alexandra said. The look he gave her was nothing short of skeptical. Right. Anyway, I'd be pleased to show you around when you're ready. There's a lot to see, and I figure you should probably start getting familiar. Alexandra glanced back at her half-unpacked trunks and immediately decided those could wait. The prospect of spending time with Caleb was too tempting to pass up. 
don't let me interrupt you. He'd picked up on her momentary hesitation. Not at all, she told him, stepping across the threshold. I was just thinking I could use a break. Chapter 4 He wasn't sure if it was a good idea to have Alexandra with him on his initial rounds of the ranch. Normally, Caleb would not have given the total security of the place a second thought, but he had noticed a few concerning discrepancies as of late, just little things here and there. A misplaced milk pail, a saddle on the wrong rack in the tack room, feed bins open when he was sure they had all been closed. Most of those things weren't that big a deal. They could easily have been attributed to tired ranch hands slipping up at the end of a long, hard day. Caleb himself was hardly exempt from innocent mishaps. As long as they were corrected easily enough, he usually let them slide. The gates, on the other hand, were a genuine problem. Over the course of the last few weeks, he had found no less than four gates whose locks were out of order in some fashion, either broken or not properly secured. This level of carelessness could not be blamed on his staff, whom Caleb trusted implicitly. He knew they would never be so cavalier about the tasks he was trusting them to do. That left only one plausible option. Someone was breaking in and Caleb had made it his personal mission to find out who it was. He was not afraid of whatever he might discover, but he wasn't naive either. Was it likely to be something dangerous? He didn't think so, but could it be? No doubt. He liked to think of his ranch as an oasis among the stormy waters of the frontier. Not everyone out in Montana had the pleasure of looking out on acres of their own land herding their own cows, grazing their own horses. Jealousy lurked in the shadow of success. As well-liked as Caleb was in nearby Maybell, his fortune was not a secret. In fact, he'd considered himself lucky to have gone this long without some sort of incident. In a way, he was overdue. And yet, he still went by Alexandra's rooms to see if she wanted a tour of the ranch. She said yes, and he led her outside, making sure to stay more or less in front of her all the time. Even as they walked toward the edge of the nearest field, Caleb knew he was taking an unnecessary risk. At the same time, ignoring Alexandra as soon as she arrived so that he could run all over creation, trying to dig out an intruder who might or might not exist was out of the question. He was stuck between a rock and a hard place, and so he chose what he considered to be the lesser of two evils. If there was trouble, he would protect her. That part was not negotiable. As long as Alexandra was on the ranch, she'd be safe from harm. He had made this promise, however tacitly, and he was determined to keep it. But there was no need to tell her yet she hadn't even gotten a good night's sleep after her days of nonstop travel, and he didn't want to see that pretty face clouded by worry, nor field any of the questions she was sure to have. He also did not want to encourage her to change her mind. To that end, he smiled as he headed toward the first paddock. All this land here is for the horses, he said, all the way back, as far as you can see. Style U. Text align left. Alexandra shielded her face from the sun. She had forgotten her hat in her room. Her deep jet hair glowed under the light. How many horses do you have? she asked. He caught something unusual in her tone, an out of place subtext that refused to be identified. The way she waited for his answer was different, too, less curiously expectant. The focus of her gaze shifted from his face to his feet and back again. Caleb shrugged. More than a dozen, I guess. He stared out across the pasture at the meandering shapes of equines in the grass. Some of them stared back, swishing their tails. 
You want to see them? The girl made no reply. She eyed the horses from where she stood. Her whole demeanor puzzled Caleb. He'd assumed for most of his life that women shared a love of horses. There was only one woman he'd known who hadn't, and she only served to support his theory. Style, us, text, align, left. Bemused, he stepped up onto the lower fence rail, put two fingers into his mouth, and whistled. The piercing sound shot high across the field. He watched as the animals picked up their heads. A few started the gradual amble over to the fence. Come on, Caleb motioned to Alexandra. Might as well meet them while we're out here. She edged nearer to the fence without uttering a word. He observed her carefully, unable to tell what she was thinking. The first horse to arrive at the fence was a dark bay gelding, sugar sweet. He hung his soft muzzle over the rail an inch or two from Alexandra's cautiously upraised hand. She brushed it with the very tips of her fingers, pulling back when the animal snuffled her palm in search of food. Then she laughed sheepishly. One hand cradled the other, as if she'd been injured. Caleb gazed down at her. He didn't get you, did he? He asked, knowing full well that there was no bite. She shook her head. No, he, he was all right, but she backed away from the reach of the gelding's long neck. Caleb reached out and patted the horse. He'd be a good ride for you, I bet. As he got down off the fence rail and walked ahead, he didn't quite notice that Alexandra's face paled a shade or two at the suggestion. I'm a sorry horsewoman, she said. He couldn't tell if she was joking. If that's true, it'll have to be fixed, Caleb told her. There's a law out here about having bad horsemen on a ranch. I'll have to give up the deed to my land. Very funny, Alexandra frowned. Who said I was joking? He kept a straight face for just long enough to unsettle her. She made a face when he chuckled. I'm sorry. That wasn't very nice of me. No. The barest hint of a smile showed up on the corner of her mouth, which she tried to squash. But Caleb saw it first. He softened. You're right. I shouldn't tease you so early on. I'll try again in a month or two. That made her laugh out loud, and he turned around to witness the joy blooming on her face. It all but convinced him that his earlier assessment had been fully correct. She was much too beautiful to need a husband by mail. That train of thought was derailed by the impact of something sharp and cold against the back of his hand. Caleb grabbed onto it reflexively, stopping in his tracks. He glanced down to see a leather bridle clasped in his fingers. His brow furrowed. What's this doing out here, he murmured, more to himself than anything. A cursory check of their surroundings told him nothing about whose it might be. There was no tacked-up mount waiting for a rider, nobody getting ready to train a colt on the bit. He took the bridle off the fence post and slung it over his shoulder. The metal buckles jingled, and the pad of his thumb brushed over a small worked section on the inside of one of the straps. As he resumed walking, he turned it out to see what had been tooled into the leather. Caleb's blood ran suddenly frigid. He blinked, passed a hand across his eyes, just to make sure he hadn't imagined it. Each time he looked, the symbol was still there, clear as day, and not just any symbol, it was one he knew. Caleb, Alexandra broke through his daze. She touched his arm, her face a mask of concern. Upon seeing his expression, she shrank back a little. I wanted to make sure you were okay, she said in a small voice. Caleb realized he was scowling. He repositioned the bridle on his shoulder, symbol down, and wiped his features of all emotion. I'm fine, he said softly. Let's go take a look at the barn. But his mind wasn't on the big red barn. 
despite the fact that he led her straight to it. As soon as he stepped into the cool, pungent shadows, he tossed the bridle away onto a hook. Just having that thing close to him made mild-mannered Caleb start to see some red. He inhaled a deep, stabilizing breath, held it, and let it out. The pressure in his head faded away. He felt like he could function normally again. This is... Mid-gesture, he stopped. Alexandra wasn't standing beside him anymore. He turned a slow 180 degrees. She had hung back in the wide door frame, peering into the dim depths of the center aisle. Box stalls lined both sides, some empty, some not. She seemed to be fixated on the horses. You know, Caleb said, stepping back toward her, you're allowed not to like them. For an instant, her skin flushed a truly astounding shade of scarlet that faded from her cheeks almost as quickly as it flared up. I suppose I don't, she admitted grudgingly. I hope that doesn't disappoint you. Caleb smiled. He had only known this girl for a matter of hours, and yet she was rapidly becoming the most interesting woman in his life. Tell me, he said, why you wanted to be a rancher's wife if you don't like horses. Alexandra pursed her lips. She turned her stance away from him, folded her arms protectively over her chest. It was obvious a nerve had been struck. She took some time to formulate a response, and when she spoke, her phrases were clipped. Horses are everywhere, she answered. It hardly matters where I go or what I do. I'll see droves of them, regardless. He had to concede at least part of that point. But surely you expected to be encouraged to ride living out in the country. Alexandra lifted her chin. A fiery spark lit her green eyes. Not if I asked you not to press me, she retorted. She cut a fierce, defiant figure, standing there in the doorway of the barn and challenging Caleb to go against her wishes. He had little doubt that if he attempted to move her the wrong way, not only would she stay right put, she'd give him hell for it. Fair enough, he said mildly. I'm not out to make you do anything you don't like. Alexandra lowered her hackles. The narrow line of her mouth softened back into sweet coral. You're a wise man, Caleb Turner. The light in her eyes twinkled now instead of blazing. Don't let anybody tell you any different. Caleb was so busy looking at her that he'd let his guard down without even realizing. He didn't hear the rustling in the hayloft over their heads. The hayloft that should have been empty. The only warning he received was Alexandra's expression morphing into shock and horror as the assailant dropped down on him from above. Chapter 5 It happened so fast that at first, Alexandra knew only instinctually what was going on. She had seen the dark blur of a shape swooping down on Caleb's head, and the next thing she could comprehend was a fight in full swing. A cry of panic leapt from her throat. Back up, Alexandra. Caleb commanded, don't get in the way. The end of his last sentence was punctuated by a glancing blow to the jaw that snapped his head to the side. It was enough to emphasize the point he'd been trying to make. Alexandra darted clear of the barn, although she was unable to tear her eyes from the scuffle happening on the aisle floor. The horses on each side tossed their heads nervously huge dark eyes rolling in their sockets. In her mind's eye, Alexandra could see a hoof somehow going straight through a stall door and into Caleb's head. She wanted to warn him about the potential hazards, but she knew he'd think her crazy and he had a lot of other things to worry about at the moment. Specifically, he had to worry about the man fighting like a demon underneath him, clawing to get the upper hand. Alexandra stood outside the barn, 
wringing her hands. A familiar feeling of helplessness washed over her. Not that Caleb really needed her help. He looked to be holding his own just fine. Sharp flurries of oaths flew back and forth with the punches and kicks. Clouds of dust kicked up a miasma around their struggling forms. Occasionally, Alexandra caught sight of a fast purpling bruise or a fleck of blood. There was a rhythmic quality to the thudding impacts. She squeezed her eyes shut tight, pushed down the scream that was squirming to get out of her lungs. She hated all fights, especially these brutal, ugly, intensely physical confrontations. Her father had brawled far into his adulthood, for exercise, he said, and for principle. But Alexandra suspected it was mostly just for cruel fun. It turned her stomach to see Caleb wrestling on the barn floor. His shirt was torn. It flapped limply every time he moved, like a dead animal. The scream she'd been trying to quell forced its way out of her mouth. Caleb, she hollered, clutching her hands to her cheeks. Stop it. Stop it right now. She hardly recognized the shrill piercing of her own voice, distorted by sheer anxiety. Don't you dare kill that man, Caleb Turner, she yelled. I won't abide that for a second. She couldn't even say for certain that it was a man, but she was reasonably sure that Caleb wouldn't beat the daylights out of a woman or a child. Nonetheless, it took a minute or two for her words to register. Slowly, almost reluctantly, the pounding blows subsided on both ends until Caleb was simply kneeling over his opponent. He looked over his shoulder at her. Alexandra, he started to get up. Stop, Caleb. She shoved back the mighty urge to cry. Hot pinpricks stung the corners of her eyes. I won't have you acting like a savage. I won't. Chastened, Caleb moved away from the other man, who still lay sprawled on the ground. Caleb held up both his hands in surrender. All right, he said in his soothing low draw. All right, Alexandra. It's okay now. She glared up at him. One of the boiling hot tears streaked down the side of her face. She flicked it away. It's not okay, she said. You saw him drop on me. Caleb spoke quietly, almost gently. I was defending myself, that's all. It looked like you were trying to murder him, Alexandra shot back. That your second catalog, bride? The voice was thick and husky, words moderately slurred. Alexandra's eyes snapped over Caleb's shoulder to the unidentified man. He heaved himself laboriously into a sitting position. His face was smeared with bruises and blood. Quiet, Zeke, Caleb replied. His gaze never left Alexandra. Sounds like she's smarter than you, at least. The man guffawed. He spat red into the dust swirled on the barn floor. Never thought you'd be the one to bring me a fair witness. Quiet. Caleb's tone bore a leaden edge. His jaw set hard. I didn't think you had enough teeth left to keep talking. Alexandra winced. She didn't like the way Caleb was speaking, but she didn't exactly care for the other man's rhetoric either. Do you know him? she asked Caleb. He nodded gravely. My cousin, Ezekiel Abrams. Everyone calls him Zeke. Seems like he thought he could ambush me all on his own. Ha, huh. Zeke spat again. Listen to you, talking like it didn't nearly work. Caleb reached out and gave Alexandra's shoulder a soft, reassuring squeeze. Then he wheeled on his kinsman, advancing. Don't spit on my floor. Zeke grinned. His gapped teeth sat crooked in his gums like old tombstones. Some of the spaces were probably brand new. Why don't you haul my sorry ass out of here yourself then, huh, Caleb? You're the one who's worth your salt, ain't you? Prove it. Alexandra's eyes moved between the cousins, 
as she tried to interpret the situation. Obviously, relations had been less than civil for quite some time. Neither man, however, showed much interest in rekindling the physical violence. Caleb had apparently won that part outright. She felt some measure of relief now that they weren't mauling each other anymore, but the atmosphere stayed unbearably tense, thick enough to slice. I don't need to prove squat to you, Caleb answered. He walked right up to Zeke, planting a foot on the floor between his splayed legs, and grabbed him by the front of his blood-stained shirt. Zeke huffed as he was lifted straight to his feet. Yeah, yeah. Zeke wrenched himself out of Caleb's grip. His balance faltered. He wobbled crazily for a second. You're stronger than you look, pretty boy. I'm always forgetting that about you. Next time, don't, said Caleb. He retrieved the bridle from the hook and threw it at Zeke's feet. I'm running out of patience real fast now, cousin. The ice has been thin for too long. Caleb spun his cousin around and seized the back of his collar, practically dragging him onto the tips of his toes. Let's go, cowboy, he muttered. Zeke laughed again, a ragged grating sound. His bloodshot eyes raked across Alexandra. Never believe a thing he says. He motioned crudely to Caleb behind him. Everything he's told you is based on lies. Zeke swept his arms out in a grand gesture. This ranch isn't his. This land isn't his. He stole every cent he's worth. Caleb didn't bother attempting to refute those claims. He had an air of resignation as he walked his cousin out of sight, down the lane leading to the main road. Alexandra stared after them. All the good feelings from her arrival just that morning were gone, sapped out of her. Now she really was tired, and her head was starting to hurt. She turned her back on the splashes of crimson, staining the center aisle of the barn. The horses were still a little spooked. Caleb returned minutes later, solemn and empty-handed. Noticing Alexandra's quizzical glance, he sighed and said, I threw him out on the road toward Maybell, sent him on home. He won't be back any time soon. I hope not, Alexandra said. She felt like there were sandbags tied to her skirts. Every time she blinked, she saw Zeke's sneering face in the split second of darkness behind her eyelids. I'm sorry you had to see that, Caleb told her. His hazel eyes held no trace of the steeliness that was there previously. Zeke and I, we have a history. It wasn't always like this between us. He glanced away toward the fields. And now I need to comb every inch of this place and make sure there's nowhere else he can get in. Caleb, it was hard for her to look him in the eye, but she knew she had his attention. Why did he call me your second bride? Silence. After a few long beats, she finally made eye contact with him. Instead of defensive or angry, Caleb just looked sad. Let me do what I need to do out here, he told her. Then I'll come in and tell you whatever you want to know. I promise. Alexandra chewed her lip. I'll be waiting for you, she said. I know. He touched her cheek lightly before walking off toward the pastures. Alexandra followed him as far as the closest fence. She leaned against the rails and closed her eyes. A cool, fragrant breeze blew the image of Zeke Abrams out of the forefront of her mind. She let herself relax and pretend she hadn't just witnessed a semi-public beating at the hands of the man she had agreed to consider marrying. Admittedly, it wasn't exactly a stretch to believe that Zeke deserved every hit he took, and then some. She knew in her soul that he wasn't the nicest man. Just remembering the way he talked to and about her made Alexandra's skin crawl. But she had principles that she would not break, and Caleb had come perilously close to that line. 
Her shoulders slumped as she trudged back toward the house. The cautious hope that had filled her chest felt like it was deflating a tiny bit with every step. Had she been wrong in the first place for desperately wanting adventure? In a way, that was the possibility that hurt the most. Still, Alexandra was a pragmatist, even if she found it hard to forgive sometimes. And she was already out there in the middle of Montana. As they stood, her options were to return to her father's crummy estate and risk living out the rest of her life under his thumb, or give Caleb the benefit of the doubt and hear what he had to say. And when her choices were framed like that, the right one was blatantly obvious. Alexandra unlocked her bedroom door, took a few steps forward, and flopped down onto her bed in a lackluster puff of skirts. The tiredness crept over her like vines in a forest, quietly wrapping around her limbs and pulling her down toward the sweet lure of dreams. She lay there in a pleasant limbo state for who knew how long, drowsing right on the line between wakefulness and sleep. Then she heard Priscilla calling, Oh, sweet Alexandra, Caleb is looking for you, dear. Alexandra pulled the pillow over her head to muffle the groan that could not be stifled. She sat up, then stood up, fixing her hair and brushing the wrinkles out of her skirts. She glimpsed herself in the mirror as she walked out. Not half bad for a girl in the midst of a crisis. Chapter 6 Caleb sat at the kitchen table, listening to Priscilla call Alexandra down from the second floor. He was not a man to let nerves get the better of him, but a sea of thoughts churned in his head as he waited. He was haunted by the way she had screamed at him in the barn, by the bare reproach in her face. And though the truth pained him greatly, to keep her in the dark would be a mistake. Zeke had, for all intents and purposes, let that particular cat out of the bag. Caleb wasn't sure whether to be furious or relieved. Then Alexandra appeared in the doorway, and he realized he was mostly scared. It was so abundantly clear that the woman was no fool, not for money, not for love, not for some lonely rancher who was hers for the marrying. The last thing Caleb Turner wanted was to repel her through no force other than that of his own rash action. He hoped with all his heart that this talk wasn't too late. She sat down across from him, gazing into his face with those enormous sage green eyes. All of her former exuberance had been replaced by wary exhaustion. Caleb would have liked to think that the length of her trip across the frontier had finally caught up to her but he knew that was only part of the reason. No more than a few hours into her stay, Alexandra was already tired of his foolishness. He drew a deep breath. I want to start with an apology. The words came slowly and carefully. He chose each one individually. That scene at the barn was no sort of display to put on in front of a lady. He dropped his eyes to the tabletop and shifted in his chair. A wave of deeply humbling shame welled up from within. Alexandra sighed. You were right, you know. How's that? Caleb was puzzled. She smiled wryly. He did attack you. An enthusiastic defense is still defense. Caleb chuckled. He couldn't help it. She had a way of keeping him on his toes. Well, I'm glad we can agree on something, but I'm still sorry, and I believe I owe you an explanation. The raven-haired woman pressed her lips together, arching her brows. You're darn right you do, Caleb Turner, and I'm right here waiting to hear it. Caleb nodded slowly. He reached up and ran a hand through his hair, collecting his thoughts. He had not dared to imagine that the shadows of his past might crop up so soon and so indiscreetly. It was, in a lot of ways, the worst 
possible scenario. But he was nothing if not a resourceful man. He owed it to his new would-be wife to try and make the best of things. Well, he began hesitantly, examining the smooth grain of the tabletop. I suppose at this point it goes without saying that I was engaged before. A brief frown darkened his features. Her name was Eliza. I guess it still is. And I was a fool for her. You must have been, if she got you in this kind of trouble. Alexandra leaned her cheek on the heel of her hand. All I know is, I didn't come to Montana to partake in an act of bigamy. She spoke casually, but the look in her eyes was dead serious. Caleb chuckled grimly. No, ma'am, he told her. He was relieved to be able to tell her an absolute truth. There's none of that here. Eliza and I, we were never married, never got that far. Oh, instantly, Alexandra's manner changed. She sat back in her chair, appraising him with cautious new compassion in her gaze. I suppose it was wrong of me to assume. I just thought... She trailed off. I know. He glanced at her. Listen, Zeke talks a wild game, and I'm sure he's none too happy to see you taking up at the ranch. Maybe I should have anticipated him making it a problem, or maybe I ought to have warned you. Caleb bit back an oath. I don't know. The best I can do is look you in the eye right now and tell you the truth. The smile that eased the concern on her face was warm, approving. I would expect no less from a husband-to-be, she said, and her words lit some type of low fire in his heart. He cleared his throat. All right, then. But even despite his commitment to honesty, the details of that previous affair were painful, and they had never quite been laid bare. She and I wanted to be married, he began at length. Or I did, at least. Come to find out she wasn't all that enthusiastic about the idea after all. His hands folded together tightly. He tried not to focus on the thin band of skin where a wedding ring would have settled. The wound, dormant for years, threatened to split open and bleed afresh. Why not? Alexandra prompted gently. Her delicate brow furrowed in mild consternation. Caleb looked away. They were at the heart of the matter now, the scar tissue, the source of the pain. For the briefest moment, he wasn't sure if he could really put it to words. The shame and humiliation still lived within him. Eliza left me. He had to make an effort to pull the sentence off his tongue. For Zeke. Shock splashed across Alexandra's expression before she contained it. She put a hand to her mouth. No, she murmured. Yep, Caleb let out a short, bitter laugh. The grass looked greener on his side of the fence, I guess. He shrugged his shoulders. It could be. She did stay there. Now Alexandra frowned. Oh, you can't be serious. Her slender hand balled into a loose fist of indignation. She'd have to be insane to marry him. Caleb grinned lopsidedly. If she is, they're a better match than I knew, he answered. Then his voice and his mood grew solemn. I thought that was going to be the end of things, and at the end of the day, I decided it was something I could live with. I wouldn't necessarily be the happiest man on earth, but maybe that was never in the cards for me anyway. The girl across his kitchen table eyed him expectantly. He could tell she'd somehow gotten invested in the whole tragic tale, and damn if that wasn't strangely gratifying. She leaned toward him a bit. What happened? It's a long story, he answered, and it's getting on towards supper. If we can get some food on this table here, I'll be glad to tell you as much as you want to know. Never in his life had he offered to lay out all his cards before. But it seemed only fair. Alexandra was there with intent to share his life, and unfortunately, Zeke and Eliza Abrams remained in the picture. She gave him a look, 
brushing that stray lock of dark hair away from her eyes. Priscilla, she called, not breaking eye contact. Are you here? But of course, darling, came the sing-song reply. Moments later, Priscilla's beaming face graced the doorframe. How can I be of service? We're hungry, Caleb stated plainly. Both of the women in the room looked at him. Priscilla clucked, mildly disapproving. Mr. Turner, may I point out that you are the one crowding up my kitchen? She gave Alexandra an exaggerated wink. You two go on and amuse yourselves while I fix something up. With that, she began shooing them out in earnest, all but closing the door at his back. That's no way to speak to your housekeeper, Alexandra teased. The way she talks, she's the one running the ranch. Caleb smirked. The way she talks, we're lucky we got kicked out. He stretched, feeling some measure of relief that at least his greatest secret was cast out into the open and at the same time, tucking his worry over her reaction away. Let's go find a way to kill a little time, he suggested as they stepped onto the porch. The fields are real pretty at this time of day. Alexandra hesitated. Her eyes flicked toward the barn before she agreed, and he could see her tracing the horizon with her pensive gaze. He did not have to be told that she was thinking about Zeke, sprawled in the middle of the barn aisle, blood running from his nose. All right, she said at last. She let him lead the way. He did go home, Caleb told her, after a few moments of contemplative silence. I can promise you that much. Zeke may be a brute, but he's not quite as dumb as he looks. He won't be back for a while yet. She folded her arms across her torso, but he will be back. Caleb spoke carefully. Zeke has always needed to learn things the hard way. I suppose that's why we never really got on when we were younger. He paused. Or maybe we got that part from our fathers. He grimaced. Yet another aspect of his past that he would have preferred not to talk about. Alexandra wasn't looking at him. He caught a hint of sharpness in her face one hand clenched at the side of her bodice. It's always the father who offers the things we don't want, she murmured. The rancher wasn't sure what to say. She seemed almost to be talking to herself, as if he had simply disappeared from her side. In the next instant, she shook off the momentary shroud across her mood and the light returned to her countenance. Caleb leaned over, and opened the gate to the pasture for her. The smell of spring rode on the late afternoon breeze as the two figures made their way through the grass. Much of the land had been close cropped by hungry horses, but the tallest blades still brushed along the top of Alexandra's skirts. She picked a small bouquet of tiny flowers from the wild stems of the field. Caleb led her to the crest of a gentle rise which was shaded by the wide, welcoming branches of an old cottonwood tree. He leaned against the sturdy trunk and took in the quietly bucolic view. Used to come up here all the time by myself, he remarked. I can see why. Alexandra smiled. It's beautiful. He cut a glance at her, thinking that not a single crystalline dawn on the ranch could compare to her shape at his side, in the slowly lengthening shadows. Chapter 7 The dinner that was waiting upon their return from the fields was just the remedy Alexandra needed for a long, long day. She had prepared herself to continue their difficult conversation from earlier, but quickly discovered that food was at the top of her priority list. Not many words were exchanged in the pursuit of sustenance, and she felt warm and content as she helped clear the table in the aftermath. Oh, don't worry yourself with that, Priscilla chided her cheerfully, taking plates from her hands. I don't know how it was where you came from, but here it's my job to take care of you, she winked. 
and I take my job very seriously, young lady. Alexandra laughed. Thank you. She returned to her chair across from Caleb, who had witnessed the exchange with a look of wry amusement. He took the napkin off his lap to run it one last time across his mouth. First and last time you get to challenge Priscilla's authority, he said, his hazel eyes sparkling. In a few weeks' time, you'll be wishing she'd let you work. Don't speak too soon, Alexandra responded. I might be able to get used to this kind of treatment. He leaned back in his seat, watching her. You never did say much about what you were leaving behind, he said. A note of curiosity colored his gentle drawl. Alexandra pressed her lips into a thin line, then answered, Nothing important, certainly. There was a concentrated effort to keep her tone from becoming curt and cold. Her own family was perhaps her least favorite topic of conversation. Whenever she thought of Virginia, her most prominent memories consisted of disapproving stares, deep sighs, and the exasperated shaking of her father's stern head. The most she could hope for in terms of validation was a vaguely disinterested nod or a dispassionate pat on the crown of her head. As she got older, these bare tokens of acknowledgement grew even more scarce until she felt little better than a maid who happened to share blood with the lord of her house. But that lord had been outraged at the idea of his daughter boarding a train for what he termed the American wastes. He had sworn to disavow her should she choose to defy him. Nonetheless, she had. The trunks she'd brought into the ranch house just that morning contained all she possessed in the world. It was an uncomfortable truth she was not yet prepared to reveal, despite Caleb's confessions. In her view, his hand had been forced. Hers would not be. Across the table, Caleb Turner tilted his head just slightly. She could sense him trying to read deeper into her words. She hoped without much success. He was quiet for an extended period of time before he finally said, All right, we'll get there when we get there. Alexandra was briefly annoyed by his nonchalance and the assumption that she'd eventually come around. It was a softer iteration of the attitude often adopted by her father in regards to matters about which he and his child did not agree. She couldn't help but bristle against the sensation of being patronized. Then Caleb pushed back his chair, and the sound of its wooden legs against the floor jolted Alexandra back into the moment. She forced her expression back towards something pleasant, masking her thoughts. We never really got to finish talking, he commented. But you must be tired. He offered her his hand. Feels like the kind thing to do would be to let you settle in. She accepted his hand, pushed in the chair behind her. It was a long trip, she said. Truthfully, her eyelids were already growing heavy. And a long first day. Caleb called his thanks to Priscilla and walked Alexandra up the stairs. The cool, smooth surface of the banister stood out in stark contrast to the warm roughness of Caleb's palm. She thought absently that a man's hands reflected something of his life. Caleb's calloused but gentle, her father's clean and always clenched. What time is breakfast? she asked as they stopped in front of her bedroom door. He smiled slightly. For me, it's before the sun shows up. That doesn't have to be the case for you just yet. I might as well start getting used to it. Alexandra let her lips curve upward. It would be kind to give poor Priscilla a break in the mornings, don't you think? Caleb let out a low whistle. You better tread lightly, he warned, with more than a trace of amusement. That kitchen is the woman's throne room. I reckon she's not about to give it up without a fight. Alexandra giggled. We'll see, she told him. She's going to find out I haven't come here to be a decoration in the house. He laughed. 
Sweet dreams, Miss Clark. I'll see you bright and early. Yes, you will. Alexandra lingered in the doorway for a few moments as he moved off down the corridor toward his own rooms. Embarrassment got the better of her, and she ducked behind her door before he disappeared, so she didn't get to see whether or not he glanced back. The click of the bedroom door sealed in a pillow of quiet that soothed Alexandra's senses. She closed her eyes momentarily, just drinking it in. Outside the barely open window, she could hear the last bird songs of the day fading into twilight. The scent of the flowering fields traveled deep into her lungs. She was determined to enjoy her time here, in the lonely wilderness of Montana, as she lay down to sleep, twilight darkening down toward night. Her eyes closed on a sky full of sparkling stars. Alexandra slept soundly, undisturbed by dreams. She woke to the sharp smell of coffee wafting up from the first floor. She smiled, turning her face into the plush pillow. A nice way to come into consciousness. Though the room was still dark, the outer world was bathed in moonlight. Undaunted by the wee hour, Alexandra threw back the covers and set about getting ready to face her second Montana day. She tried to believe that this one might pass unmarred by blood and violence and unpleasant revelations. The water in her wash basin was clear and cold, prickling across her skin. She looked at her reflection in the small glass hanging above the washstand. I can do this. She spoke aloud into the stillness of her room. She gave herself an encouraging smile, a little push that got her into her clothes and out into the rest of the huge rambling house. She found Caleb making coffee by the light of the uncovered stove. Good morning, she said brightly. He looked up, eyes full of momentary surprise. I'll be honest, I didn't expect to see you at this hour, he admitted but I can't say I'm complaining. My goodness. Alexandra watched him tamp coffee grounds into the percolator. No one saw fit to warn me about your silver tongue, sir. He chuckled while fetching down a second mug. Would you like some? He asked. I have to say it helps to get the morning moving. Alexandra nodded and thanked him. She moved around to look for the sugar bowl maybe a bit of cream. It was a matter of peculiar satisfaction to her that the ranch house's robust pantry put the one in her family home to shame. Anything to widen the distance between her and her drowsy hometown was something to hold on to. Caleb made his coffee strong enough to sting the inside of her nose as the scented steam curled up into her face. Alexandra held the cup in both hands, savoring its warmth. I'm sorry I pressed you about your family yesterday, Caleb said suddenly. He leaned against the side of the kitchen table, studying the floor between his leather boots. Seems like I'll be doing a lot of apologizing until I get the hang of this again. A pang of remorse shot through Alexandra. She chased away the bitterness gathering like dust in the corners of her mind, not toward him, but toward the circumstances that had brought him into her life. It's not your fault, she said and meant it. I, I'm a grown woman, and if we are to be married someday, you should know more than you do, even if I don't ever plan on seeing my father again. Caleb nodded sagely. Take your time with it. I know too well how that goes. He used a sip of coffee to buy time to gather his words, and then he continued. I felt that way about my uncle, Zeke's papa. There was a man who'd rather burn a bridge than build one. He never understood how much he lost by that way of thinking. Men like that don't care about anything except themselves, Alexandra muttered into her coffee. She shook her head. Let's not spoil the morning with this. I'd like to have a better day today. Come out to the porch then, Caleb said. He straightened and headed for the door. 
I'll show you something that'll start any day off right. The air was cool and damp, heavy with dew. Alexandra pulled her shawl tighter around her shoulders. The faint line of the horizon stood out pink against the velvet blue sky. The sunrise is what won me over, Caleb said. First morning I spent out here, I knew I'd come home. He put his hands in his pockets. Won't be long. Do you watch the sun come up every morning? The ritual struck Alexandra as an oddly romantic practice for a rancher on the frontier. She hid a smile. Not anymore, he admitted. It's amazing what you can get used to if it happens often enough. He adjusted the brim of his hat. Usually I'm in the barn by now, if not halfway down the pasture. Spread out before them, the great tableau of the sky had begun to glow with subtle undertones of yellow and red. Don't let me keep you. Alexandra gazed up at the soft underbellies of low-hanging clouds being painted by the sun's arrival. She could see its brilliant rays advancing, chasing away the night. Not at all. Caleb's voice had lowered into something near to reverence. Moments were meant to be spared for sights like this. They stood side by side on the porch of the house they had just begun to share as the sun swept up past the gently rolling line of Caleb's pastures. Alexandra's breath caught in her throat, her upturned face bathed with brand new light. Had she ever once seen a sunrise in Virginia? If she had, it was not like this one. The clouds blazed gold and orange and the palest, most delicate blue. In the sprinkling of trees around the porch, birds struck up the songs they'd left off last night. A beatific grin bloomed across Alexandra's face like a flower unfolding in the light. That's about right, Caleb said, glancing at her. He was grinning, too, in an understated way. Welcome home, Miss Clark. Chapter 8 She looked mighty good standing there on the porch of his house. Caleb held the image in his mind for a long time after he left to set about doing his chores. He had decided to make security rounds a daily occurrence, at least until he knew that Zeke wasn't going to try anything crazier than usual, and he couldn't deny that Alexandra's presence on the ranch had a lot to do with this sudden surge of protectiveness. When it was just him and Priscilla and the ranch hands, he had tended to think of his property as just that, property he guarded simply because it rightfully belonged to him. Now, he abruptly felt as though he had a real stake in the place. Caleb Turner wasn't about to let his cousin jeopardize the future he was trying to build. Zeke's interference had cost him once, and dearly. It was not going to happen a second time. He took his time inspecting the acres and acres of fences and fields. Being on the land was as close to religion as Caleb ever really got. He barely imagined any other life. Whatever place Alexandra had started in, the one she refused to discuss, could not possibly measure up to the tranquil beauty of his land. That was what he told himself anyway over and over, like a mantra in his head. The fact that she had not immediately demanded to catch the next train out of Montana was a promising sign, but he still feared that everything he told her the day before had yet to make a significant impact. Once she realized exactly what she was dealing with, she might choose to cut and run, and who could blame her? Caleb scowled at the memory of Zeke's sneering visage, made all the uglier by the extra teeth he lost in the course of their scuffle. In the back of his mind, Caleb had always known he and Zeke Abrams would come to blows. In a sense, there was no other possible resolution. The rift in the Turner Abrams clan was rent by the hands of their shared paternal grandfather a man who had loved the bottle and only one of his two sons, according to the other. Shunned by the patriarch, Zeke's old man, 
turned on the family, shedding the Turner surname as he went. For years, Caleb only caught glimpses and hearsay of his wayward uncle as he and his brood lingered on the fringes of everyone else's lives. It was only years later, after Grandpa Turner died and left the entirety of his sizable estate to Caleb's father and no one else, that Caleb grew to understand the severity of the schism, and henceforth, that conflict left an indelible mark on his life, no matter how hard he tried to restore and then keep the peace. Eventually, his papa passed on too. As luck would have it, Caleb had always been an only son. He pulled his horse to a dead stop in the midst of a spring tangle of weeds and hardy blossoms. The ranch buildings shrank down to the size of toys in the distance. Caleb turned in the saddle, taking in the view of all that belonged to him. He knew that Zeke felt differently, that the ranch in the middle of the Western Territory represented a great injustice. And he understood intrinsically that Ezekiel Abrams had made it his life's mission to correct this blight on his family. He was the type of vengeful, selfish man who would think nothing of going to the ends of the earth in pursuit of his own idea of fairness. Caleb had no idea how to explain this to Alexandra without making it sound like she'd made a grave mistake in leaving her former life behind. The thought of depositing her at the train station, standing there as the engine pulled away, it was awfully hard to stomach. In less than 48 hours, he had somehow already managed to weave her into his perception of the ranch. His mind's eye told him she belonged right where she was, exploring the grounds or arranging her wardrobe or sitting in one of the old porch rocking chairs. Caleb wanted her to stay. He thought he could get used to seeing her gorgeous face day in and day out. If she didn't want to be his wife right away, that was just fine by him. The past few years had taught him more than his fair share of patience. He just wasn't sure she'd see things the same way. What had begun as a peaceful tour of his property rapidly denatured into an exhaustive internal review of everything that could possibly go wrong between Caleb and his second betrothed. By the time he returned to the barn, he was practically sweating and jumping at shadows. He kept expecting to turn around and see Alexandra waiting for him, packed trunks in hand. Of course, that didn't happen, but his paranoia mounted, despite all efforts to keep it in check. He was so distracted by the whirlwind in his head that he very nearly failed to spot her emerging from the house right in front of him. Hello, stranger, she said cheerfully. Her lips turned down into a quizzical frown. You look like you've seen a ghost. An inscrutable expression flashed across her face. No, ma'am. He feigned an easy sense of self-confidence. Nothing but sunshine and sky out there today. Alexandra examined him closely. She floated out a hand to brush the very edge of her fingertips against his jaw. You're quite pale, she remarked. Truthfully, Caleb could hardly doubt the observation. He might as well have been sweating in church all Sunday morning for how uncomfortable and clammy he felt. He hoped the smile he pasted across his mouth was convincing enough. Could be the hat, he said, touching its brim. It casts a pretty wide shadow. Alexandra blinked. Then she rolled her eyes and laughed. You know, I'm getting the feeling you're a little more trouble than you're worth, Mr. Caleb. She flicked a stray piece of chaff from his collar. Well, he answered lightly, you'll learn. He turned away to hide his expression in case it changed. I hope the ranch has been treating you well in my absence. If by the ranch you mean your sweet housekeeper, then yes. Alexandra leaned on the porch railing, sweeping her skirts to the side. She made out like she'd lay down her life sooner than let me contribute to the work effort. 
but I know I'm going to have to pull my weight around here one of these days. Caleb's eyes shifted automatically down to the bare space on the fourth finger of her left hand. A crazy notion cropped up in his head, barely audible over all the other noise. He found himself wondering if he shouldn't just ask for her hand right at that moment. He was ill-prepared, though, without a ring. In theory, the stage was all set. Every necessary component was there, from the beautiful woman down to his willingness to place a jewel in the band setting. There was the chance that she'd say no, which was minuscule under the circumstances. Had he not specified that he was searching for a wife in the ad, she answered. Had she not responded that she would make an excellent matrimonial partner? If Caleb was being honest, the proposal itself was little more than an observation of tradition at this point in the process. Alexandra would not have ventured so far into the unknown if she wasn't prepared to marry him. Just having someone new around is a major contribution, he managed to say. He fixed his gaze stubbornly on the middle distance, refusing to give in to the humiliation of worry in front of her. For now, we can say you're earning your keep. Oh, had he been looking her way, he surely would have noticed the tint of her cheeks intensifying. That's kind of you to say, but I don't mind working. Honestly, she smiled sheepishly. I've always had something to do, whether I liked it or not. Rest assured, I never imagined coming out here to lay around all day. Again, she glanced with some trepidation toward the barn, its doors standing open to allow for a steady flow of ranch hands. Caleb followed her line of sight. The shapes of his horses materialized in the dim light inside the barn, rows of long necks and heads protruding from the stall doors. I'd like for you to do something interesting if you insist, he said. Wouldn't want you to be bored on the job. He started to stroll in the direction of the barn, his stride unhurried, hands in his pockets. Alexandra kept pace, her green irises lit with a keen, fiery spark. I'm afraid to ask what you mean by interesting, she said laughingly. I wasn't going to tell you anyway, Caleb answered. He stopped in the dirt and gravel courtyard in front of the barn entrance, turned and faced her. You'll have to trust me with this, Miss Clark. Now I'm Miss Clark again, too, she quipped. This is beginning to make me nervous. Her tone remained unconcerned but he caught a flicker of uncertainty in those expressive eyes. So be it, she declared. I'll hereby put my trust in you, Mr. Turner. Good. Caleb led her up to the open doorway and crossed the threshold. He made sure to give the loft where Zeke had been hiding a wide berth as he took her through to the tack room on the right. In there, the smell of oiled leather clung to everything. He walked over to a bucket mounted on the wall, filled with round curry brushes. Alexandra picked up a brush, turned it over in her hands. She ran the pad of her thumb across the stiff bristles, wrinkling her nose at the feel. I've never seen one of these up close, she said. You'll do more than look at it today, Caleb declared. He reached into a second bucket and took out a second brush, elongated in shape, its brush hairs fine and soft. I'm going to teach you how to groom a horse, the right way. Alexandra huffed. You say that as though you've seen me do it wrong. I don't have to see that to know it, he said, never known a farm girl who was scared of horses. This time she flushed noticeably and he felt a little sorry for teasing her. He gentled his tone. I want you to be happy here. This is going to help that happen. Alexandra did not look convinced. She frowned at the brush still clutched in her hand. This is absolutely necessary. You're positive? Caleb held back a grin. As can be. 
She sighed so heavily, her whole frame seemed to deflate some. Fine, but I'm only brushing. That's right, Caleb said. For now. Alexandra shot him a glare. Scan the QR code or click on the link in the description to read the full book. The full audiobook will be available on YouTube in a few days. What did you like the most? Comment below and share this video on your social media and with your friends. Watch one of the following videos. Subscribe to our channel like this video and hit the notification bell to not miss any new audiobooks. Thank you for watching.